So we got a five star pulling up. Absolutely. You know, we got to talk about it because getting five stars in town, pretty darn big deal. So we're going to dive into that as well as some latest news around a few 25 prospects we have like Michael Fasusi, Andrew Babalola, Christian Jones, you know, a few of those. So let's dive into that. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. Do me a favor, hop in the comments, let your boy know your thoughts. You think Oklahoma got a good chance of pulling a five-star this cycle? Definitely want to hear it because we know we're in the hunt for a few. Love to hear from you all. All right. Want to talk about, we got Michael Fasusi as well as Andrew Babalola. A report just came down from on three not too long ago, kind of talking about the lay of the land when it comes to them. But the first one, Christian Jones, we ain't heard much about him, right? He's in Nebraska. We just got to figure out when he's going to make a decision on his team. He's very quiet. So we don't anticipate him saying anything time soon. But for Susie, we know it's at the end of August, and he is definitely in the hunt of making a decision. And then Babalola, it appears that, you know, he wants to do his before the start of his senior year, which means it's going to be August as well. So Oklahoma's in the mix of some big name players that we should be getting excited about. But let's talk about this weekend because the Sooners Under the Stars happens on Thursday, Friday. So that means what? 2026 is now officially a real year. I know Coop dropped some videos on some offensive linemen he was looking at. So of course, you know, we had to take a gander at that. Shout out to him. So look at those here on the channel. But we're going to talk about a five-star top athlete in the country that's pulling up Brandon Arrington look at his measurables watch him film and then we'll close out with the five-star line and we're looking at for the 25 cycle all right see the numbers here I looked on 247 they have him listed at 62 180 right here he's listed at six foot but I'm gonna go with 62 180 he's a five-star consensus and composite now as you can see on three has him says the number 20 player in the country they're five stars of the top 32 players. So technically he's a five star and two, four, seven has him as a composite five star player, top athlete in the country on most sites. He is uh, a beast out of La Mesa, California, Mount Miguel. And as an athlete, there's an article that dropped about him making his visit. He plans on being here in Oklahoma this weekend, which of course is a huge deal. And he's one of those players, dog. I'm just going to tell you now at his size and then at his speed to it. Look, if he's actually six, two and he puts him size up, we get him to like 200 pounds. He's only a, what he's going into his junior year. So he's still young, but speed wise runs a sub four, four forty as a, as a personal record went to his uh, social medias and his personal records. He has listed here is well, he got himself listed at six, three also. So he's probably taller than what everybody's got him listed, but 100 meter 10 to seven. 200 meter four a uh, 20.40 ooh fast and in his 40 yard dash 438 absurd you can see the speed here had to put the the couple of track videos I saw on him he's a track athlete now when I looked at the recruiting profile of him it appears that Jay Vela is the one that's been showing him all the love the one that's been hawking on him so it sounds like he may potentially want to play on the defensive side of the ball but I'll tell you this, watching his highlights as an offensive player too. Yeah, so defensively, he's the dude that sucks up everybody that tries to break out. I haven't seen him really hit much on his videos. That's fine. He plays corner. As long as he's a ball hawk and can get the ball out of the defender's hands, I ain't really tripping. But at wide receiver, watching his film, dog, he reminds me of the era of Randall Cunningham and Randy Moss. Now, he's not Moss size at 6'4 yet. But if he gets up there, like I said, on his account, he has himself listed as 6'3180. If he gets himself, if he grows, hits 6'4, and continues his speed, bro. Because Cunningham used to look to the side, see who was matched up with Randy, smile. You see them braces, and he would hike it and just launch it. And when you watch the film here, that's all you see. Quarterback sees who he's matched up with, he grabs the ball, takes a step, and just launches it deep, and dude just catches it. Like, that's just stupid good, right? That is elite talent on his part. And so, for me, I'm like, all right, 
Who's going to win this battle? It feels like here on the recruiting side, this is going to be a fight between Emmett Jones and Jay Vallada. Now, y'all do know there was a legitimate, not, not, not like squabble. They weren't squabbling, but they were fighting over a player in Jacoby Johnson, right? The athlete that came from Mustang that's in there. 6'2", Hooper, slash safety, slash corner, slash can't play wide receiver. Like, right, Vali joked about how they were kind of fight duking it out over who's going to get his services. Because he can play both sides of the ball. He's that talented, right? And then Jacoby got that interception against TCU. So he's got his first career interception in college football. and But he can play on the other side if needed. I'm seeing the same thing with Brandon Arrington, right? Arrington has the capabilities of going to either side of the ball. The kid is stupid good. I mean, stupid good. And I don't know what Oklahoma's thinking. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities we can go here when it comes to him, but he's coming into town. So now it's opportunity for us to, to, you know, show out. And he's from La Mesa, California. He's from California. You know, we have snatched up some kids from Cali recently, right? We got, you know, Jaden O'Neal who we pulled in, right? And we've pulled some, it appears that that is now the now pipeline, uh, Dominic Williams is from California. We, we, we're, we're going to create a pipeline out there and start getting them dudes into the SEC. So now y'all see Brandon's film, hop in the comments. Let me know how y'all feeling about that. What y'all think about Brandon Arrington and, you know, Oklahoma's chance to try to snatch him up. I know it's early. Like I said, to me, 26 ain't a year, but because sooner under the stars is this weekend, it tells me, Yes, yeah, a real year. But we'll have a list and we'll talk through all the players that's pulling up. Now, let's continue this conversation. The next thing is, of course, the big fish that we're going after for Susie Babalola. We talked about at the beginning of the video. Their dates are here in August. On 3 dropped an article, and as well as Steve Wiltfong over there at On 3 had his whip around, and he was talking about Oklahoma's chances with both. So it looks like Babalola... It's a battle between Oklahoma, Stanford, and Michigan in the orders of Stanford, Michigan, and Oklahoma. And it feels like for him, Michigan is the best middle ground because they're, you know, academic. They're part of the AAU, which is the big academic conference for schools on the academic side. But Stanford's got his attention, and he actually likes the opportunity to plan for Bill Beaton, Bowen, Oklahoma. And he had a conversation with Walter Rouse, who transferred to Oklahoma from Stanford to give some perspective on what can be done. So the opportunity for him to actually play NFL football, probably best at Oklahoma, but Michigan is no slouch when it comes to that. Sharon Moore, former Oklahoma offensive lineman, now the head coach there, does a fantastic job of getting Michigan players into the league now. He's been doing that the last few years, so... We're battling it out with him. But Baba Lola feels like he's probably going to lean towards the tree or the Wolverine right now. But Oklahoma feels like they're still in there. We'll see what goes down there. Now, the other one, the biggest fish, the one y'all care about the most, Michael Fasusi out of Louisville, Texas. So it's a battle between Missouri, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, and Texas A&M. That was his top five. And the way that Wilt Fong put it in the whip around is that Oklahoma feels like they're leading. Texas feels like they're slipping. Don't sleep on Texas A&M. He thinks A&M and Mike Elko is in a great job of prioritizing the kid. And that's a place that could snatch, come out of nowhere and pull them. Right. I could see that. It, it kind of feels like a situation where you got like KP check who ended up at Nebraska. It was just so much of a distance that, you know, he eventually, you know, Nebraska got in there and was able to, to win it like Grant Bricks, the same thing. Right. But I don't think it's a bad thing. I think K staying closer to home is probably a good thing. Same thing with Grant Bricks. He wants to stay close to the crib. Makes sense. And Nebraska is doing great things with Mike Rule. But I think in this situation, A&M trying to sneak in for, for Susie, they may have a chance. I am still very bullish on Oklahoma potentially winning this one. He still feels like the David Stone commitment here. Like he's a dude that just wants to be here at Oklahoma. It's the place he's visited the most. It's the place he talks about the coach is the GOAT. So I sense that he's probably going to end up here and we're going to close that, that chapter out at the end of August. So we'll keep our eyes open. Christian Jones is still quiet. We ain't heard much about him. It's still up in the air. We're just waiting for him to say he's ready to commit. Hopefully he shows up this weekend at the party at the, uh, the uh, party at the palace. If he shows up at the party at the palace, it's a good chance that bad boy closes this weekend. So once we, 
filtered through all of the kids and their social medias. Me and PG will hop on that, get y'all a list and talk about who we think is going to pull up and what it looks like. So let me know what y'all think. Hop in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. How y'all feeling about that? We'd love to hear from you all. You made it this far like the content. Go ahead, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'd love for you to join this family of Sooner fans. We're talking all Sooner recruiting on this channel, and we're having a blast doing it. So Coop's going to be breaking down a lot more 26 players over the next few weeks, especially as we do the Under the Stars. I think we'll probably get a video out for every single player that visits for, for under, the, under the Stars. That way y'all have some content over the next week while I'm traveling. And uh, yeah, besides that, we'll talk soon. Peace.